Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is an audiobook summary of Al Reese and Laura Reese's book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Branding, is a must-read. Incorporating anecdotes about some of the world's most successful brands, The 22 Immutable Laws of Branding is considered the definitive text on the subject of brand building. The 22 Immutable Laws of Branding The Law of Expansion The Law of Contraction The Law of Publicity The Law of Advertising The Law of the Word The Law of Credentials The Law of Quality The Law of the Category The Law of the Name The Law of Extensions The Law of Fellowship The Law of the Generic The Law of the Company The Law of Sub-Brands the law of siblings. The law of shape. The law of color. The law of borders. The law of consistency. The law of change. The law of mortality. The law of singularity. A successful brand is built on the concept of singularity, which creates the impression in the mind of the prospect that there is no other product on the market that is quite like your product. The first chapter is titled The Law of Expansion. In conclusion, the power of a brand is inversely proportional to the scope of its influence. When you plaster your company's logo all over the place, that logo loses its clout. Chevrolet used to be the most popular automobile brand in the United States of America. However, by attempting to be all things to all people, the brand's power was weakened. You must contract your brand rather than expanding it if you want to establish a strong brand image in the minds of your customers. In the long run, expanding your brand will weaken your position and diminish your authority in the marketplace. The law of contraction is discussed in Chapter 2. In conclusion, when you narrow the scope of a brand, it becomes stronger. Many small-town delicatessens try to carry a wide variety of items in order to appeal to a larger audience. Fred DeLuca, the founder of Subway, focused his attention on one type of sandwich, the submarine sandwich, which helped him perfect his entire business. Surprisingly, when you limit yourself to only making submarine sandwiches, you become quite adept at making submarine sandwiches. The law of publicity is covered in Chapter 3. Summary publicity, rather than advertising, is responsible for the creation of a brand. Even more powerful than what you can say about yourself is what others are saying about you and your brand. As a result, today's brands are built first and foremost through publicity, and they are maintained through advertising. Unless a new brand is capable of generating favorable coverage in the media, it will have little chance of succeeding in the marketplace. Being the first brand to enter a new category is the most effective way to generate positive publicity. Chapter 4 Advertising and Public Relations Law Summary, once established, a brand requires advertising to remain viable. Many mega brands were launched in a blaze of publicity when they first launched. However, as the initial frenzy died down, each of these brands was forced to turn to advertising in order to maintain their positions. When a brand advertises that our product is the leader, the prospect infers that the product must be superior to its competitors, which is not the case. That is the power of having a strong brand. The law of the word is covered in chapter 5. Summary, a brand's goal should be to become synonymous with a word in the minds of consumers. In order to establish a brand, you must concentrate your branding efforts on gaining control of a single word in the prospect's mind. A word that no one else has the right to use. Once a brand has acquired ownership of a word, it is nearly impossible for a competitor to wrest control of that word away from the brand. Saab attempted to take safety away from Volvo, but failed. Volvo has successfully established itself in the minds of consumers. What is the best way to tell if a brand owns the name of a category? When people refer to a brand name in a generic manner. The law of credentials is covered in Chapter 6. Summary, the claim to authenticity of a brand is a critical component of its overall success or failure. When it comes to authenticity, there is one claim that takes precedence over all others, and that is the claim to authenticity. Customers reacted positively when Coca-Cola launched its advertising campaign, which was titled The Only Thing Like Coca-Cola is Coca-Cola Itself. They all agreed that it was correct. Coke is the genuine article. Everything else is a clone of itself. This is a list of the company's credentials. The most direct method of establishing a brand's credentials is through its leadership. Coca-Cola has credibility because it is widely regarded as the most successful brand in its industry. However, when it comes to fast-growing, new categories, it's important not to assume that everyone knows which brand is the market leader. The law of quality is covered in Chapter 7. Summary, while quality is important, brands are not built solely on the basis of quality. 
In most cases, there is no correlation between success in the marketplace and success in comparative testing of different brands. Why? Because the buyer's perception of quality, or rather his or her perception of quality, is the most important factor to consider. To establish a high-quality brand, it is necessary to narrow the focus and combine that narrow focus with a more prestigious name and a higher price. The latter enables the buyer to derive psychic satisfaction from the purchase and consumption of a high-end brand in the general public sphere. The law of categories is covered in Chapter 8. In conclusion, a leading brand should promote the category rather than the brand itself. Customers aren't particularly interested in new brands, rather, they are interested in new categories. Customers aren't concerned with dominoes, what they are concerned with is whether or not their pizza will arrive within 30 minutes. The process of first preempting a new category, such as Domino's did with home delivery of pizza, and then aggressively promoting the category results in the creation of a powerful brand as well as a rapidly expanding market. The law of nature is covered in Chapter 9. In the end, a brand is nothing more than a collection of letters and numbers. The choice of a product or service name is the most important branding decision you will ever make for your company. Because, in the end, a brand is nothing more than a collection of letters and numbers. It's easy to get caught up in the differences between what makes a brand successful in the short term and what makes a brand successful over the long haul. In order to succeed in the short term, a brand must be the first in a new category. Long term, however, the original idea or concept is no longer present. All that is left is the distinction between your company's brand name and the brand names of its competitors. The law of extensions is covered in Chapter 10. Summary, the quickest and most effective way to destroy a brand is to have it appear on everything. Before launching your next line extension, consider what customers of your current brand will think of the extension when they see it in person. If the market is eroding beneath your feet, stay put and launch a second brand to counteract the trend. Instead, remain in your current location and continue to build your brand. The law of fellowship is covered in Chapter 11. In order to grow the category, a brand must be open to collaboration with other companies. Not only should the dominant brand tolerate competitors, but it should actively encourage them to do business with it. Customers respond positively to competition because they perceive it to be a significant benefit. Customers are suspicious if they are forced to buy something. However, there is a caveat, when there is an excessive amount of choice, consumption suffers. The generic law is discussed in Chapter 12. Putting a generic name on a product or service is one of the quickest ways to ensure a failure. Generic brand names have a tendency to fade away into obscurity. Only brand names are remembered in the brain. It is recommended that you find a common word that has been taken out of context and use it to connote the primary attribute of your brand when naming a product or service. In comparison to a company like General Video Rental, Blockbuster Video had a more powerful brand name. The law of the corporation is covered in Chapter 13. In conclusion, brands are simply brands. Companies are simply that, businesses. There is a distinction between the two. Brand names should almost always take precedence over a company names, according to industry standards. Consumers buy brands rather than companies, according to research. If the company name is used as a brand name alone, as in Coca-Cola, customers will recognize these names as brands. Make use of the company name if you have to use it. However, do so in a way that is clearly secondary. The law of subbrands is covered in Chapter 14. Subbrands can be extremely destructive when it comes to building brands. Because of the introduction of subbrands such as Holiday Inn Express, Holiday Inn Select, and Holiday Inn Garden Court, the Holiday Inn brand has grown into a mega brand. The power of the core brand is being eroded by the subbranding strategy. Subbranding is a branding strategy that works from the inside out, with the goal of pushing the core brand in new directions. It attracts management's attention because of the promises it makes, rather than because of the results it achieves in practice. The law of siblings is covered in Chapter 15. A second brand can be launched at the appropriate time and in the appropriate location. It is essential to distinguish each sibling as a distinct individual brand with its own identity when taking a family approach. Resist the temptation to give the brands a family-like appearance or a recognizable identity. Ideally, you want each brand to be as unique and distinct as possible. A strategy of having a family of sibling brands is not appropriate for every corporation. A sibling strategy, on the other hand, can be used to establish long-term dominance in a category when it is appropriate. The law of shape is covered in Chapter 16. In conclusion, the logo type of a company should be designed to be pleasing to the eye. Both of my eyes. Because your customer's eyes are aligned side by side, a horizontal logo type is the best shape for them, roughly 2 and 1 units wide and 1 unit high. 
to represent your company. The Avis logo type is nearly perfect in terms of shape. The law of color is covered in Chapter 17. In conclusion, a brand should use a color that is diametrically opposed to that of its major competitor. When choosing a color for a brand or a logo, managers are more concerned with the mood they want to create than with the distinct identity they want to establish. And while mood or tone can be important, other considerations should take precedence over making a decision solely on the basis of mood. Leaders have first dibs on the best candidate. As a result, it is preferable to develop a distinct brand identity rather than relying on the appropriate symbolic color to convey meaning. The law of borders is covered in Chapter 18. In conclusion, there are no impediments to global branding. A brand should be able to transcend national boundaries. Every country has its own set of perceptions that are distinct from others. When a brand's perceptions are in sync with those of its home country, that brand has the potential to become a globally recognized brand. When competing on a global scale, appeal to a different segment of the market rather than the market's entire population. Corona Extra, for example, rose to prominence around the world as a result of its association with the resurgence of Mexican cuisine. The law of consistency is discussed in Chapter 19. In conclusion, a brand does not emerge overnight. Success is measured in decades, not in years, as is commonly believed. Markets may shift, but brands should not. At any point in time. However, their essential characteristics should never be altered, even if their meaning is slightly altered or their slant is slightly changed. The law of change is covered in Chapter 20. The bottom line is that brands can and should be changed, but only infrequently and with great care. Unless you are completely integrated into the prospect's mind and have developed a unique and distinctive perception, you should avoid changing your brand. It's going to be a long, difficult, expensive, and, in some cases, impossible process to get through this. The law of mortality is covered in Chapter 21. In conclusion, no brand will last forever. In many cases, euthanasia is the best option. Once you understand the nature of branding, you'll be able to determine when it's appropriate to allow your old brand to die a natural death and when it's appropriate to create a new brand in a newly invented category. The law of singularity is covered in Chapter 22. Summary, the single-mindedness of a brand is the most important aspect to consider. To summarize, what exactly is a brand? A single idea or concept that you own and that you want to implant in the prospect's mind. Simply put, it's both simple and difficult to do. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.